Congresswoman <laughs> Crockett, you were actually one of the votes that approved the amendment to FISA. This is despite, though, Donald Trump posting or tweeting, whatever the hell it does, um, kill FISA. So yeah. the 19 Republicans, House Republicans, blocked the bill. Johnson gets embarrassed because he doesn't have the votes. And yet you guys still voted in support of the amendment. Why? Yeah, okay, so we had the FISA bill, we had the amendment. So the amendment was actually going to require a warrant. So essentially, FISA is all about foreign. The F in FISA stands for foreign. So it's really foreign surveillance. But as we know, the Republican Party is run by Russians at this point in time. So let's say some Russian decides to communicate with a member here in D.C. What FISA does is it's surveilling what the Russian is doing. But in the midst of that, if they communicate with a U.S citizen or someone who's just on U.S. soil, then you have more protections. You've got constitutional protections. So for me, it's a matter of if you see something that looks a little funky because it may implicate, implicate an American, then we probably should execute a warrant before we start going through this American's life. Um, we know that there were abuses on FISA before. I am concerned with the rhetoric that we get out of Trump, that he would potentially clean house and mm -hmm. misuse FISA. And when we uh, are passing legislation, Legislation. We should pass legislation that will survive anybody being in office. So it was, it was a big concern. So there was an amendment that failed because there was a tied vote. Um, it was a very interesting coalition of votes. Um, but the difference between the FISA that could not pass the rule and the FISA that did pass the rule um, so that we could actually vote is it was a reauthorization initially for five years. Now it's a reauthorization for two years. I actually am okay with that because that means we don't have to go a half a decade before we find out there's something wrong with this current iteration of FISA. If there's something wrong, we can go ahead and go in and correct it hopefully sooner rather than later. So what does it tell you, though, after all of that drama over FISA, you get Mike Johnson. It's almost like a plug and play. You can take out Kevin McCarthy's face. And you can yeah. slap Mike Johnson's face yeah. on that body. Johnson goes down to Mar-a-Lago yeah. to sit there. And like I said, I'm not joking, bend the knee, kiss the yeah. ring to the man that was was trying to kill the kill FISA because obviously, like you say, Trump wants to protect his own rear exactly. in terms of not getting any type of connected surveillance to Russian malfeasance. Yeah, you know, listen, here's the deal. I think he went to go say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I had to do it. <laughs> I mean, this is a matter of national security. Yeah. And as we see everything that's going on around the world, the last thing that we need to do is delete a tool that has been helpful. This is a tool that we needed when we've got the 9-11s of the world that are happening on our soil and other places. So, you know, it's really important to have the tool. It's a matter of what are the parameters to make sure that this tool cannot be misused, whether it's under the current administration or another administration. Um, but ultimately, FISA is supposed to expire next week. And so if we didn't get something done, and I think that's what you saw, we were divided on the amendment that Biggs offered. But when it came down to passage, most of us said, we've got to have something done. And if it's messed up, it's messed up for two years. Or if it's great, then it's great for two years and we can continue to go down down the path that we're going down. I had the privilege of speaking with Congresswoman Madeline Dean last night, yeah. House impeachment manager and somebody who was very, very outspoken about the fact that the common denominator through Trump's criminal cases is election interference. And so <laughs> the <laughs> irony and the hypocrisy of having Johnson and Trump standing there screaming about election integrity and how important it is for our national and federal elections, I mean, it doesn't escape your notice that these are the types of narratives that are getting pushed by the Republicans when they themselves are standing in the way of national security, for example, yeah. with FISA, or standing in the way of or creating drama where drama doesn't exist. There's already a law yeah. that makes it illegal for non-citizens to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it's nothing more than games, right? I mean... The reality is that we know that the Republicans are not serious when it comes to actual policy. Yep. Like, they don't have any policy ideas. And so what they do is they spend all their time fear-mongering, right? And they want to get people to be very emotional and say, you know what, I'm going to go vote, because if I don't vote, then that means one of those illegals that we see on all of the video footage from the news, then they're going to take my vote. Like, they just want to fear-monger and play to what people don't understand and don't know. And it's really unfortunate, because... 
when you are in a position of power, the last thing that you should do is say that we're going to play on those that don't understand what the laws are, that don't understand what's going on. And so we're actually going to lie to them to motivate them to come and support us when we have no policies, especially no policies that are going to help them. You know, in a time when most people are talking about Ukraine, or at least some people are talking about Ukraine, you know what we're going back to do next week? Oh, wait, I got the answer. Wait, wait, ready? The Hands Off Our Home Appliances Act, Liberty yeah. and Laundry Act, Clothes Dryers Reliability Act, and the Stop Unaffordable Dishwasher Standards. You're I'm not so joking. Smart. This is not You're a joke, so right? I was ready it's, for it's, you. <laughs> it's not a joke. I mean, but literally, I have to laugh to keep from crying because I know that they didn't knock doors and find out from their constituents or their voters that they wanted them to talk about liberty and laundry. I don't know what liberty and laundry what is. Liberty is. And laundry? I have no idea. I have no idea. But the point is, they care more about our laundry having liberty. They care more about the freedom of our refrigerators than they care about the liberty and freedom of women in this country that are dying because of their terrible failed policies when it comes to saying, you know what, we believe in small government unless it means going into a woman's uterus. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.